Hello, today we're actually doing something in the day, in spite of having a late night. It wasn't quite as late last night. So we're off to the Water Museum today. We decided to walk to the museum. It's about 2.2 miles from where we're staying. But on the way, there's this amazing view. So I just wanted to stop and show it to you. I can't believe how close these houses are here to this very, very tall retaining wall. I'm not sure if I'd feel comfortable if it was me. I wonder if it blocks the daylight out a lot. Don't walk on it basically. It's uh, having some regrowth happening, I think. We're walking down the Elevador de Bica run again. It appears that it's closed at the moment. I think it's shut for mending or something. My bee was just saying how much we could do with it because we haven't half gone up and down this great big steep hill a lot of times since we've been here. I'm just carefully trying not to <laughs> tread on the slippery bits. <laughs> I'm just going to have a look at this bit of paper and see what's up with it. Five weeks from the 4th of November, due to maintenance repairs, Bika Funicular is out of service. Oh! Just when we're staying in the area. It's good for our fitness, I think, if it doesn't finish us off. In the meantime, kill or cure, I say. There's a supermarket just here, a mini presso. We're going to pop in quickly and get a bit of breakfast for IB because he hasn't eaten yet, but I did already. Bread. Some pastries. Well, that looks like a meat cream. Really yeah, that is. Carne. Right, do we need a bag or something? Yeah, there are bags down here, look. There go. Galena? Galena chicken. Oh, sorry. Did you get this up? Yeah, so you put, put it over to the side, see? See that? No. Dump it down there and then it's ah. there. There you go. Well done. You grab it from the side. Yeah. You know, different from the UK, see? That can fox us foreigners. I'm marvelling at the upright pizzas. You'd never see them stored like that in the UK, so it's something that's caught my eye. It's getting really warm now. I've had to take my hat off. There appears to be a giant polar bear right in the middle of Praça do Comercio. I can't believe there's somebody in that. It's massive. It must be boiling. It really is getting very warm and bright, and I didn't pack a sun hat because normally when we come in November, it rains every day. <laughs> But it's been really nice this time. We've been really lucky with the weather. We've walked along the river to this part now and we're having a quick Google Maps stop. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? And the light is lovely. Seven minutes. Google says it's this way and it's 1.2 miles? 1.3 from here. We're halfway. I'm quite fascinated by this building here. Yeah. The top looks completely different to the bottom. I wonder how old it is. I've done an annoying thing, which is to get hungry unexpectedly. IB has not long had those snacks from the mini presso, though to be honest, he reckons he could, could manage a bit more. So he didn't have that much. And uh, yeah, I think I'm ready for a coffee. And, the pasta de cage. I'm a bit limited with my choices because I don't eat meat, but I do eat the uh, pasta de bacalhau, and they're, they're they're good. Made from the dried salted codfish, I think. Somebody in the comments will correct me if I'm wrong. I've never been here before, I don't think. This neighbourhood. I seem to have lost IB. I had a text from Cesar, who's the whistle player and uh, concertina player, that we're going to play later in O'Gillins with tonight. I don't know if I'll vlog it or not. Uh, anyway. I looked up and he'd gone, but I've spied him now since I've started talking and it's just by there, by the fountains. If this is your first time to my channel, IB stands for Invisible Boyfriend, Namrado Invisível, and he is real, but he doesn't like to be on camera, but he's my boyfriend. Oh, that looks refreshing, doesn't it? Vomiting horses, look. Horses obviously had quite a bit to drink. 
gentleman here has just kindly told us that there's some drinking water here. So actually, it doesn't seem to be working at the moment. But, but there it is anyway for future info. I've just seen that's where the Fardo Museum is. I would love to go there. Hopefully we can go there, see what Ivy wants to do. But he's a musician, aren't you dear? So you might be tempted to visit a Fardo yeah, Museum at some yeah, point. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> We're going to try this little cafe here. Looks uh, like there's an empty table. We've gone for some cake. Look at that. Behold. GoPro close cake action for you. <laughs> and I made the late. Kindly brought over by the lady. You're using your knife and fork. That's an awful idea. Wow, I didn't really cap it up with it. Looks like an eggy, dense eggy custard inside. It's not that old. Sugar. Before the uh, mountainous scent. It's a lot like a custard slice. Obviously, with a lot less custard. I'm really glad I chose this one. Just in case you saw yesterday's vlog, did I tell you about the cooker? I think I told you about the cooker. We nearly blew up the apartment because we put the oven on, went to cook a pizza, and sat down on the sofa and then realised that we could hear hissing. Well, IB could hear hissing. It was hard to hear because the washing machine was on. We went to investigate and the oven was hissing out gas and the light had gone out and we just couldn't turn it off. We were turning the knobs round and round and round and it just wouldn't stop. We didn't know where it was coming from but we found the gas tap very quickly in a big panic and turned it off before filling the apartment up with gas. stinking of gas. Opened all the windows and called the Airbnb host. Well, sent a message through Airbnb. And he sent his sister round and um, she had a look at she found that there was actually a hole in the pipe going out of the cooker. So we're waiting for further developments on that, but we have no news yet. My darlingest Ivy. It's like the total opposite to me when it comes to temperatures. It is 18 degrees, right? And he is expiring with the heat, aren't you? I can never live in Lisbon because my boyfriend would die of heat exhaustion any time other than November to about end of January. Then he would expire. Just come in the winter. I'll just do six months on and six months off. Well, I can live with that. I really want to live in Lisbon. I so do. Oh, I miss it so much all the rest of the year. I'm not here. I feel really at home. Anyway, IB is champing at the bit to get on, and I'm just chatting, ignoring him, talking to the camera. I'm talking to yourself. I'm talking to myself. Don't listen to him. That was a very pleasant little cafe. That's what it's called, just in case you're interested. And we're heading on up the hill now, fortified with custard slice type cake and made the late. I found something exotic, something exotic if you're British. I'm pretty sure that's a banana tree. It's somebody's banana tree, but you don't see that in the UK. Well, occasionally you see one of those in the UK, but they don't really bear any fruit. Sometimes people have them for a novelty, but they don't like our climate. laundry there. Laundrette, I should say. I like these narrow streets. Look, you can see the sea through this little alleyway. Can't resist this one. Is this actually the way or are we diverting? Well, we're headed in that general direction. Parallel that with the general coast. direction. So if we go up here, and at some point, there's a car coming out. I didn't know it was an actual road. I just saw the most adorable little grey cat sitting contentedly on somebody's window, but it was somebody's window, so I didn't want to film it because privacy and all that. Oh, I can film that though. Look! Look! I just found out where Spider Man lives. There, look, he's hanging his laundry up. So, Spider Man moved to Portugal. Come round the other side. It's the Igreja de Santa Ingracia. I can spy over there some interesting looking tiles as well. We're not going to go in the big church because we are going out later and we are on a limited amount of time and we want to see the water museum. Look at these beautiful tiles. 
Bloop, bloop. Hello! There's his mate there. There's more, look, just goes on and on. Incredible. I can see a massive cruise ship. Can you see it? Look. But also of interest is this rather stunning mural. Whee, look at that. Oh, incredible. Aha, we're definitely going the right way. Good old Google. Okay, one more great big hill. I'm super fit by the time I've come back. IB's great suffering continues. Now he's got a fly in his eye. I have found it. Look, equipment from yesteryear. Pumps. Does it even work? It looks quite dried up. Oh, yeah, my water's just gone on the camera. <laughs> Good job it's waterproof. I've got, it, I've got water all over me fluff it's now. When you first come into the museum, there's a film and it can be in English if you want to, and it talks about the history of the formation of the water, you know, for drinking in Lisbon. And then you come into this interpretation room here. I've read some of it, I'm working my way around slowly. It's very interesting stuff, actually. And it talks even about the formation of the universe initially. I wasn't expecting it to go quite that far back. I like the ceiling, look, it's mirrored. That's me, there. Well, that's a very interesting angle. Oh, look, that's the top of my head. It says at one stage there used to be water carriers, they used to go to the fountain in the square, fill their barrels up with water and go around transporting it. Oh, this picture's from 1662. And it became quite a regulated profession, I suppose it would have to be, wouldn't it, to ensure that bacteria wasn't infiltrating the supply to people. Quite a responsibility, really, if you think about what contaminated water can do. The water carriers were still in existence right up until the start of the 20th century. Have a look at this now. I bet you can't guess what it is just by looking at it. it. Looks almost like a tree ring, doesn't it? But actually, those are lime deposits inside a water pipe, and they accumulated over several years. And that was before water treatment began to be carried out on a continuous and regular basis. But isn't that amazing? That's really surprised me. I was interested to learn that Alfama. It's actually from Alhama, which is Arabic. There we are. And it means hot baths. So that's the origin of that name. My goodness, look at this. Apparently, the water spouts, as shown in this diagram, were distributed according to social slash racial groups, which was in keeping with the municipal law of 1551. Look, this one for black and captive people. Fountain number two for the Moors. White men and boys, well they get two. Black women, white women, good heavens. I'm wondering if this is that section there. There's a picture of a man filling up his barrel there. Here's a picture of the aqueduct here. The public water supply used to be via 30 fountains. And you still see them today, don't you, out and about? I don't think I really quite took into account how crucial those were in their heyday and that those were the only sources of supply for people. I thought it was just, you know, for having a drink while you're out and about. I didn't consider that it was for actually harvesting your water for your everyday needs. Thinking about it, it is obvious, really, but it's just something I would never have considered. This part here is talking all about the stages of water treatment, but look at the bit at the end. Look at that, what do you think that is? It's sludge, it's what's left over after all the sediment is filtered out of the water and it's disposed of then, but look at it, ew! This part here is showing the percentages of water contained in various beings, including us. It's in descending order, look, the most is a jellyfish. It goes right down. Let's see who's at the bottom. A fish who lives in water is only 65% water. After the Saladish Machinish, 
the machinery room, I think, or the pump room. I've lost IB. He's quicker at reading stuff than me. I'm a bit slow. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I like it in here. I'm not sure what these things do. But they look pretty impressive. Smells of oil, I think. It's a lovely smell, I like it. it smells of old fashioned machinery from the steam age. Cool. Was the pump room? It's pointing down. Oh, ooh, I can see an IB. <laughs> it's halfway through my oars and I, I spied him. He's just there. Look at this. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> Watch for him. Oh, what do you think, IB? <laughs> Really? And giant wheels. I like giant wheels. I used to spend quite a lot of time in the Cardiff Maritime Museum as a child and grew up around steam powered things working. So I think I've got fond associations with it. <laughs> We've just been having a little look at this diagram on the wall here. It was brought into operation in 1980. There we are. Comprises of five boilers powered by coal that triggers four machines. It spans many levels from underground, ground level and up here too, and, and even more. I'm very glad we've come. This is a giant wheel here. Look. Depending on the velocity, they'll spin out higher. Mm -hmm. And the higher they spin, it lifts this arm, yeah. rotates this bar, and will open and close as well. So that will regulate the speed because if it gets excited, it goes over fast, it will slow down the valve here, and if oh. it's going slower, it will open the valve. Oh. Looks like I can climb a little way up here. Look at these beautiful steps. This is the top of those great big, uh, I don't know what to call them. Sorry, I'm a bit ignorant, but I'm finding it all very exciting, even if I don't quite understand it all. It's one of the, the arm of the pumpy thing. <laughs> Another great wheel there. It's cordoned off. Let's go back down. Oh, well, that's the gallery we were in previously. I'm getting hungry again, this is the problem. <laughs> the cake has worn off. Ironwork is beautiful, isn't it? 
Have we seen everything now? Yes. Okay. So there are loads. There's four, aren't there? Four of these museums in different parts of the city. Mm. I've enjoyed this today. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Yeah, glad we came. I've just popped outside. I'm waiting for IB to finish in the loo. I'm intrigued about what this is, so I'm just going to have a peer through the windows. I don't think we can go in it, though. I don't think it's part of the exhibition. I don't know. Let's have a look. Oh, no. Wow. It's working, whatever it is. Making a right old racket. This door feels warm to the touch. You can tell it's been in the sun. It's radiating. Hmm. Well, I can't pretend to know what it's all doing. One of those trees with peeling off bark. I won't pick at it, but. <laughs> oh, it's quite a chilly breeze now. Wow. It's not too bad. I think I might put my jumper and hat back on though. Just wanted to make that crunchy noise, I know. The small things. Got some interesting little bits and bobs out here too. We are now hungry and it's about four and a half hours until our dinner time. Later on we're going to Ogilins, we're going to play in a session and we're going to have a meal first with some friends of ours who live here and who play Irish music, but I won't vlog that. But anyway, that means it's a perfect time for us to have a light meal now because that will be, you know, we'll be ready for our dinner then at 8.30. Yeah. So let's see what we can find in the way of a calf, shall we? My Maya Delight is here, my milky coffee. As if by magic, the toste de queijo has appeared. What a lot of queijo there is. Queijo means cheese, by the way, just in case you didn't guess. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's all stringy. Mm. Just what the doctor ordered. That's Ibis, tosta mista which means a mixed toasty basically, it's mixed with ham and cheese. That's where we were, just coming out now, we're going to stroll gently back to the apartment and I'm going to do some editing, Ivy's going to do some work and then we're off out for the evening after that. But thank you so much for watching, do give the video a like if you liked it, comment down any thoughts below and hit the subscribe button to follow more of these adventures, Lisbonian and otherwise, <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!